Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, I'm collaborating with prime mutants again for this interesting equation using two different methods. I'll be using trigonometric method and prime mutants will be using this brute force algebraic method, so stay tuned. Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be solving this interesting radical equation. The question is solve the equation. When your x is a real number, then we have x cubed minus three x is equal to square root of x plus two. Okay, so first of all, if you take a look at your right hand side, we have square root of x plus two, which means your x plus two should be greater than or equal to zero, which means x is greater than or equal to negative two. So let's talk about this case number one. For case number one, I'll assume that your x to be between negative two and positive two. In this case, we can make a little trigonometric substitution. Then we can say your x is going to be two times cosine of the angle, say, a, where the angle a has to be between zero and pi. Okay, then let's plug it in. Let's plug it in. X is equal to 2 times cosine A to our original equation. So now we have 8 times cosine cube of angle A minus 6 cosine A that is equal to square root of. Now 2 times cosine A plus 2. Let me factor this 2 out. And parentheses, we have cosine A plus 1 then. Okay, so this is what we have so far. But from now, I'll be using this half angle identity. So we already know your cosine of, say, um, a over two. That is equal to plus minus square root of one plus cosine a over two. So that's why if you square the left and right hand side, then your cosine square of a over two, that is just one plus cosine a over two. 2. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'll be multiplying 4 on the left and right hand side just to use trigonometric identity as much as possible. So that's why if you go ahead and do this, then the left hand side is going to be 4 times cosine square of a over 2. That is now equal to uh, 2 times 1 plus cosine of angle a. Okay, see what we have on the left, the right hand side. We have square root of 2 times cosine a plus 1, right? So that's why if you put your square root on the left and the right hand side, then we have square root of this whole thing is equal to this right hand side, which means the right hand side is now square root of 4 times cosine square of a over 2, right? So your right hand side of the equation is now square root of 4 times cosine square of a over 2. Okay, then what about your left hand side of the equation? We have 8 cosine cube a minus 6 cosine a. Let me factor this 2 times cosine a out, right? So we are working on left hand side. So factor 2 cosine a out. Then we have a parenthesis. Then we should have 4 cosine square a, and then minus 3. I'll be using trigonometric identity as much as possible. So we can rewrite this inside of your parenthesis part. Say this is 2 times now, 2 cosine square a, and then minus 1. Then after this, we should have negative 2 plus 1. So that this inside part, 2 times cosine square a minus 1, this is cosine 2a. So that's why now we can rewrite your inside of your parentheses part as 2 times cosine 2a. Okay, and then we have negative 2 plus 1, that is negative 1. So that's why your left hand side is going to be 2 cosine a times this everything. So the left hand side finally is 2 cosine a times 2 cosine 2a minus 1. That is your left hand side of your equation. So that's why. Okay, so from this, if you rewrite this, right? So if you rewrite this and work a little further, then it has to be 4 times cosine a cosine 2a. Okay, then we have minus 2 times cosine a. So if you work this out a little further, this has to be now equal to then 4 times okay, 1 over 2. 
then we have the parentheses, right? Then we have cosine 3a plus cosine a, right? Okay, that is what we have, and then minus 2 cosine a. Okay, so that's why this is going to be the same as now 2 times cosine, just the 3a. So the final expression for your left-hand side is just the 2 times cosine of 3a, since we can cancel those cosine terms out. So that's why the final expression for your left-hand side is going to be 2 times cosine 3a. We have the right-hand side and the left-hand side. So your equation has to be now 2 times cosine 3a is now equal to this square root of 4 times cosine square of a over 2. Okay, which we'll say cosine of 3a is now equal to uh, cosine of a over 2. So this is what we have, right? So that's why we can specify some values for your a. And then we already have your a has to be uh, between 0 and the pi. Okay, so that's why, first of all, okay, so from this we can talk about how your 3a uh, minus a over 2 has to be 2, say, m pi. And at the same time, 3a plus a over 2 is, say, 2 n pi, where both m and n are integer. So that's why for case number one, if you assume that your x to be between negative 2 and 2 inclusive, then we can talk about three values for the x, right? So first of all, your x has to be then, uh, now it has to be 2 times cosine of just a 0, which is equal to 2. Then the other two value has to be 2 times cosine of uh, 4 over 5 pi. And the other one has to be 2 times cosine of then 4 over 7 pi. So we have three numbers for case number 1 for the value of the x, right? One of them 2, then the other 2 is 2 cosine 4 over 5 pi, and then 2 times cosine 4 over 7 pi. Okay, then moving on to case number 2. So case number 2 is... We assume that your x is strictly greater than 2, but I don't think we have a real solution in this case. So we can check this out. So if you assume that your x is greater than 2, then the left-hand side of the equation, x cubed minus 3x, should be greater than x, right? So we can get x cubed minus 3x should be greater than x, which means x cubed minus 4x is greater than 0. So that means x times x squared minus 4 should be greater than 0. But then again, you write this out of the equation. Square root of x plus 2 should be then less than x, right? So now square root of x plus 2 is less than okay, x. Then in this case, it has to be the x square uh, minus x minus 2 should be then greater than 0. So that's why if you solve this, then we have x minus 2 times x plus 1 should be greater than 0. That means your x has to be greater than negative 1, or x has to be less than 2. Okay, so that's why. Now, what we have for this case is going to be your x has to be greater than square root of x plus 2. Then at the same time, it should be less than um, x cubed minus 3x. So in this case, there's no real solution. So that's why the final solution for this question is all these three numbers that we got, right? x is equal to 2, and 2 times cosine 4 over 5 pi, and 2 times cosine 4 over 7 pi. That is the final solution for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting algebra question, so I'll be back with more videos and more questions like this sometime soon.